What's up guys? This is the Rifleman and I am back to bring you to the first episode of a brand new campaign as Poland and Lithuania, which has won the faction vote. We will be playing on Hard Hard and we will be playing until the world domination victory condition of holding 40 regions. This is part of a, a bit of an experiment with the channel where I'm going to have uh, three campaigns running simultaneously, but ideally only one at any one time being a true world domination where you conquer the map. This is to try and get a bit more, uh, a bit more cycling through different factions a bit more regularly than I currently do. So let's get cracking. Uh, Poland is can be a really tricky faction. There's a few different ways that people want to play it, or people recommend playing it. And the most common way you see people start off Poland and Lithuania is to go for Crimea, which isn't a bad shout. So the main problem is is that you're surrounded by Austria, Prussia, and the Ottomans. Russia is your ally, but the problem is if you don't start securing some decent political relationships with some of your neighboring factions, you get swamped. So typically, because we're both fellow good Catholic nations, we're gonna try trade with the Ottoman, with the Austrians, sorry, and we're going to try and back them up. The idea being that when war with Prussia kicks off uh, if there's both of us fighting we're more likely to be able to take to defeat the prussians rather than doing it on our own ideally we won't fight either of them but i think if there's a war between prussia and austria it's in our interest to be involved in the action because if austria defeats prussia that's ultimately bad for us because you've got a really strong austria and the same is true in the opposite direction so that's, I think that's how I'm going to do it. First thing I want to do, though, the true first thing you want to do with Poland is the government is abysmal, mostly. You've got, like, this chap who's pretty good. You could probably do some mixing and matching. Um, but the opposition is generally quite competent. So you, and because the popularity is less than 50%, you may as well just pop an instant election right off the bat. And the opposition are in. So my government is generally better. But let's make sure that we've got everyone in the right locations. So this guy. Plus one management, minus two treasury, minus okay, so he's okay, so he's currently after both of these, he's zero overall, but terrible for treasury in particular. Uh, plus one management, plus one management. So in anything except the treasury, he's okay. So as a head of government, he's okay. This guy, plus one management, so he's a four-star. Um Minister. And the reason why I keep referring to four stars is that at three stars, competency, if you like, uh, they are a zero. So they provide no penalties and no gains. At least with a four star, you are getting slight um, gains. So you are a four star, so you're ripe to be moved. Plus one treasury. Okay, so that's an immediate switch that could be, well, that's probably the best thing to do off the bat. Everyone is four star or better. Let's check to make sure we've got no super awesome people hiding in the wings. Plus one treasury. Plus one navy. Plus one management. Minus two treasury. So I think we... Well, I really, you swap these guys around. Because you're the, this guy gets an uplift to five stars. But we don't really have uh, a navy. So it's, it's a bit... Much of a muchness. Uh, so that's our ministers dealt with. Let's go back to our trade, to our trade, um, trade screen. Let's try, let's try trade with the Ottomans in the event that we, well, ultimately the plan is to try and invade Crimea. So let's send our agent down here because they need to start to convert. And where's my rake? There he is. He wants to come down here as, oh, actually, no, he's not really needed bit of indecision here about what I want to do with him. He probably wants to stay up here. The agent can... My um, religious agent can scout down here to find out the enemy's dispositions. Let's group Mr. Pontiotsky in this fort. Uh, so, here is something that's always fun to try and do with Prussia. Right now, Gdansk is worth 286 gold a turn. Konigsberg is worth 1,800 gold a turn. But for whatever reason, well, I say whatever reason, for territorial integrity reasons, the AI is generally really really um, receptive to this trade. Yep, they're really happy with that trade. 
So now we own Konigsberg, which is a much wealthier region, so our income is a lot better off uh, right off the bat. Um, it also will eventually give us access to uh, a port here at Memel, but we need to sort out our agricultural problems first. Uh, so, we have a university down here, but the problem is, is that they are kind of near the frontier, so this university is a bit vulnerable. I quite like the idea of destroying this coaching inn and replacing this with a school. So adding, building a school creates lots of clamour for a reform, but because we're building it in a proper city, we've got more buildings that can create public happiness and uh, provide a bit more um, repression than, say, if you were to build one at Minsk. So this is going to become a church school. No, not church school. A university or a college. And that will be our most strategic university because that will be... It'll be really hard for the enemy to prevent this university from researching, whereas this one can be raided. So as far as... Let me see. As far as research and technology goes... Um, I'm probably going to go with this one, this university, down the military tree, try to get plug bayonet and then canister shot just to provide, get our demi cannons to provide some really useful um, artillery support, then race down towards fire by rank, because fire by rank is MVP. So we've owned Königsberg, this army here can march up to garrison Königsberg, this force just sit in Warsaw for now. This army down here, let's start to generate some infantry to help you out. 4,200, that's enough to upgrade a couple of um, industry buildings. So let's try to get some income growth right off the bat. 7,700 is pretty good for turn one. Yeah, the main thing is to see what happens here. I'm not going to back up Saxony, and I'm not going to back up Denmark when they inevitably get attacked. Actually, I wonder if... So no, I'm definitely not going to help Denmark. It might be easier to cancel the alliance now, just so that we don't get... Um, I don't know. In, in theory, I'm not sure if this works, but it kind of feels... Um, less treacherous to get rid of alliances when they're not at war. Although, Saxony's my protector. I'm not gonna... Mm. Let's keep hold of them for now. Just in case. Just in case they manage to defeat the Prussians, because it can happen. Um, 288. That's all of our money spent. Let's hit and turn. You want an alliance, and you want me to pay you effectively my treasury to get it? Yes. You want to swap territories, Austria, you're not going to get it. So if you don't have an alliance with Austria, that trade will make them declare war on you to get it. They want it. Uh, so that's why a alliance with Austria to early on is really, really valuable. Well, I suppose if I'm... I suppose if that army in the south, okay, maybe a bit of a weird decision here, that army in the south is just going to kind of hold off the, or to provide a bit of a buffer zone, actually, against the Ottomans. I think I've tried to bite off more than I can chew. Let's not go for Crimea. That is, especially if we're going to fight Prussia. Okay, right, you don't go south, you're going to join this army. You are going to go up to Königsberg to convert that um, population center. Okay, we want to slowly. Okay, maybe not two units in each army. Let's slowly start to grow our army. Let's get an army encampment because it gets us an extra research point per turn for military technology, so that will help us when we later try and race down the uh, bayonet track. Then we probably want to get a couple of these cheaper go. Actually, let's get the craft workshop upgrade because industry is just a real winner for us. Although, let's cancel this government building. Let's get uh, Gardenas upgraded to a school. 
We've got lots of... We've got quite a happy population. Although, actually, you might want to... No, keep going for Königsberg. We could probably demolish Tannenberg. We have a new town to the south, but we don't want to do anything with it yet because we haven't got the money. So yeah, let's keep growing these armies so they can slowly start to creep forward and potentially take Gdansk in future. Um, two turns to plug bayonet. So we've recruited two unit units of infantry. Marathas are at war with Portugal, just to be expected. And the United Provinces are at war with Spain over Brussels, most likely. Right. Let's keep the end turns coming. So you can, you probably could get away with. Is it worth building near the border to the south? Okay, so Prussia's attacked Saxony. I am not going to back up Saxony. Prussia has attacked Austria, and look at all of Austria's friends. I am going to back up Austria. So Gdansk is ripe for the taking. Dresden's been lost immediately, but the idea now is that we've at least got a a strong, a relatively strong ally in the form of Austria. I think I do want to upgrade that building near Lviv, or southwest of southeast of Lviv, as a, another school, perhaps. Because I mean, the thing is with Poland is we need to research a lot of things. So Austria's oh, Britain didn't back up Austria. Okay, so this force here. Can you demand the surrender of Gdansk? You can't. We can take it. First of all, let's get my agents up here. So Leopold von Anhalt de So is in Dresden. Let's Keep growing our army. So you can recruit a regiment of horse. You probably... So we've got provincial cavalry, but provincial cavalry is a bit bad. We've also got Ulands. Very good Lancer cavalry. Let's get one of those because we are Poland. Polish Lancers are very thematic. You're just going to slowly gather your strength. So upgrade you to a governor's residence, upgrade you to another school. So three schools as Poland is really quite aggressive. Um, but we need to upgrade the philosophical, we need to go on the philosophical track pretty rapidly. We have to progress lots of technologies down the military track, as well as growing our agricultural base to grow some of these ports. That's the strategic situation facing us right now. Um, let's probably try and take Gdansk sooner rather than later. Because ultimately, if we wait, uh, the Prussians may just send more troops. So let's take the territory now. Capture it back from our... <laughs> well, it was previously our territory. Now it will be ours again. And, yeah, I think this is the most appropriate thing to do. Slowly build up our army and our economy at the same time to support the growth in extra troops. So we don't have plug bayonets yet we will do soon okay my pikemen are going to be serving as pseudo cavalry and my cavalry is going to get involved as well well let's have a look at my polish pikemen actually let's have a look at all the units i mean they look pretty nice it's a really nice color Polish line infantry. I've seen a lot of them. Kind of standard. I'm not so sure about... I don't know. I kind of like the the red and the light blue. The militia just look fairly regular. But look at this guy in his biffy moustache. Nice. Provincial cav. White coats never really do it for me. And the general's bodyguard's just got a really, really handy shoot me here emblem in the middle of his chest. Cool. There's the general himself. There he is. I mean, he looks pretty good. The darker blue looks better than the pale blue, I think. Right. So 
so we are going to march up in good order nicely one of the garrison line units is going to sit back so we can isolate and destroy the rest of this force quite cheaply although they are running okay, my line is going to run and match them so they've got one unit of provincial line to worry about in the short term this garrison line unit don't worry about them So the objective here with the infantry is just to fix their line. Just engage, just to hold them. My pikemen. Okay, they are folding in on the flank. Okay, their, sh their infantry can outshoot ours. At least the line infantry can. Don't run too close to that infantry unit. We don't want them to commit yet. Ro roll in into the firelock on citizenry. Get my general behind their line infantry. My militia in the trees. Cease fire. My line infantry is going to be engaging their line infantry. The general to hit the back of their militia. Just don't die in the initial charge. This should be okay. Provincial cavalry is still hacking away at the enemy militia. Pikemen can hit the 2nd Regiment, they're wavering already. Provincial Cavalry charge into the line. They're shattered, shattered. Charge into the back of the 2nd Regiment, the foot. More Pikemen coming in. They don't have... Oh no, they, sorry, the Prussians do have bayonets um, because they start off with them. Okay, let's maybe pull my general out of there. That's a bit of a risk. Let's get my line infantry. Start marching over to deal with the last unit. Oh yeah, they too have fallen. Let's march my pikemen up on either flank. Something like this. Let's speed up time. We don't have to worry. They've, they're all shattered and the infantry are actually dead. My line infantry regiment is still completely intact. Okay. You men withdraw. Engaging my militia. Ooh, we've got a very bad position here for my line infantry. Oh no, they will be able to see them. Cool. My pikemen around the flanks as quickly as possible. Okay, now my infantry is starting to take some hits. Oh, even fire at will. Give them a volley. They're wavering. So we can make them break with little bloodshed. Just give them a charge to see if we can break them. There we go. Don't have to worry about chasing them down, although actually my general may do just that. Just to try to get a bit of extra experience. 
just to make their stats a little bit It's not about um, destroying the army, because the, the army will be destroyed as soon as we take the city anyway. I'm not going to get the other chevron, because they routed around this feature weirdly. But nevertheless, the territory is taken. It has created a dent in the, in the Prussian economy, although that's somewhat offset by their successful capture of Dresden. Unless they rebel, you know, that can happen. So, the, okay, let's use my my agent to try and sabotage the um, conservatorium to try and see if we can provoke rebellion and get the Prussians kicked out of Dresden. This force will only really, will only really commit if something untoward happens. Let's hit end turn. So we'll Lviv on the... Um, Ottoman front, we've got fortifications, so if they want to come after us, that's okay. Especially if we have pikemen in the city, so if they do capture, if they do make a breach or capture the gates, then their cavalry are going to get shredded trying to push through our pike line. Yeah, I think with a strong research base, we're going to absolutely go mad. Although, the university near the Ottoman frontier I would treat as a very low priority um, we've got bayonets treat that as a very low priority um, school because they're likely to get raided quite consistently so our most valuable technologies need to be researched back here in Guardians excellent the human advance so you can only recruit pikemen again I'm not opposed to pikemen But it's just not what you want. Okay, let's get another two units of line infantry and get another unit of line. So Dresden. Sabotage. Okay, hold on. Did they repair the government building? No. Sabotage the, you know, the building. If that army leaves, though, they're in trouble. Especially when they've got the Prince Eugen is ready to move. Okay, let's upgrade the Weaver's Cottage. Let's check our new technology. You're going to go for canister shot, just because we've got demi cannons, and demi cannons, while we get to fire by rank, canister shot from your artillery in the line is really useful. So you're going to try and keep, con we'll convert the majority Protestant population. One more turn till we get this school. Two more turns till we get this one down here. Okay, I don't think there's anything else that we can do. Yeah, this army's getting their strength up. Maybe you might recruit a Lancer unit as well. Okay. Ooh, Mr. Urbanski. Plus one treasury, plus one justice. You might... Oh, you're the opposition. Well, boo on you, good sir. 67% popularity. That's okay. Let things stick on again. I mean, they could, you could go for Berlin. Berlin's right there. Now, pressure's going to come. See, that's exactly what I mean. That vulnerability there is is consistent. You know, they can raid that school with impunity and just stop what we're doing whenever they like. Although in this case, we do have an army in, in Poland that we can push out to try and defeat them, which we definitely want to do, because right now, losing entire units this early on in the campaign is very bad for the AI. Sabotage the conservatorium. Just keep knocking them down. The exempt, this region is exempt from tax. I mean, I don't quite know why you're going up here unless you're going to come after me. Okay, so you've got this school. You go after... You kind of have to go after empiricism. You're probably going to tag that with a couple 
of Opera House upgrades to boost our... Because these provide... Um, maybe not the Conservatorium, but the Opera House produces... Adds extra points per turn for re Enlightenment research, so it should speed up our progression through the tech tree. So we could go for push towards Berlin, but right now I want to very carefully husband my economy. So down here, you can start to call in some reinforcements. We can also start to upgrade our roads to get that passive wealth growth. And then you men are going to push out of Poland to engage this Prussian army. Well, army. Raiding force. So we can destroy them. And this does ultimately lend very well um, to our aims against, to our aims of uh, attacking the Ottomans. So I'm, I'm happy to fight in Europe as long as we, if we can use it to safeguard our position. So demi cannons line up. Pretty good infantry line up here. But again, the idea is we want to surround and destroy this army completely. Let's form you guys up. Let's have a look at my lancers. Oh, light blue. I, I, I have no words if that's historically accurate or not. I mean, look at, look at that moustache. I have no, no idea if that's historically accurate or not, but it's just the light blue. I've never, not, never really been a massive fan of that colour. So the enemy are going to advance towards us. I'm happy to let them do that. The demi cannons are going to open up at long range. So they're focusing on the 8th Regiment of Foot to the rear. Hey, you don't have bayonet. Those, those, so those, the troops that we engaged before, they must have um, put plug bayonets in. So we now have plug bayonets. But if you employ plug bayonets, the enemy is... Well, your infantry is now perpetually melee infantry. Once they... So it's literally like a... Where are you going? Literally like jamming a cork with a bayonet on it down your road, down your musket barrel. That's kind of what you're doing with plug bayonets. So once you use them, you can't, you can't take them out. And that unit effectively becomes a pseudo-pikeman. They are withdrawing. You men need to advance up the flank. You men advance towards them at speed. I mean, this infantry is particularly interested in my Lancer cavalry. So the value in these units is getting the Prussians to do exactly what they've just done here abandoned their defensive position. So let's get my lancers up on the flank, get ready to land a devastating charge in against the 9th Regiment of Foot. Let's get my general up here on the high ground. Come on, 5th Regiment of Foot, you're in position. My artillery to engage the eighth regiment. Ooh. At this point, these units just engage, put, put on plug bayonets, engage. That would be very aggressive with you guys. There you go. So now they've lost the ability to shoot at the enemy. These units can. Oh, they've broken. Awesome. Artillery cease fire. The Prussians are wavering at our plug bayonet charge, so we should have a melee advantage. Yeah, now the general 
can pursue them. Fire it well off. We do want to continue just because we want these troops to cease existing. Kill the ninth. Kill the enemy captain. Excellent. Troops have been killed. I'll mop these guys up. My lances actually get a chevron of experience for that slaughter. Awesome. Close victory. Well, you know, it keeps our school safe. How about you? So now you guys can replenish for only 300. That's pretty good. So we've got 1,106. Okay, let's upgrade the government building in Minsk. So all of our towns are growing. I was reluctant to play around with my policies because right now I need income. Um, I, 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 mean, I need income to fight these like short, short-term problems. Rather, so rather than dropping them all down low, you know, I need cash. Crimea, we can try trade with you. No, I'm not giving you military access. But yeah, we definitely want. Uh, we definitely want common land enclosures for here and you will also need common land enclosures to get these buildings or to get um ports upgraded in menel yeah you've been passed with research you've been upgraded me i suppose do you well, do i just race for five by rank the answer to that is maybe it is maybe. Uh, just a second, everyone. Apologies for that, everybody. Uh, right, but everything else, everything seems to be falling into place. Gdansk is safe. This army's safe. Prussians are hemmed in. Um, yeah, so it looks like we could start looking at trying to re-engage in Crimea, although we probably want to make sure that uh, Prussia is down for the count once and for all. And ultimately it may draw us into war against the Austrians, but I think we don't have to worry about that right now. I think we want to hit end turn. Um, as far as research goes, do we want to shoot straight for ring bayonet? think we may um, hmm. I think we may I think we've got the, the if we were under the cosh and needed to fight more battles canister shot might be more necessary but we've actually this is a really we've got quite a decent amount of breathing space here so we can probably afford to go for the more um, the stretch target really yeah I mean that's see that's an ideal outcome the Austrians to lose the siege of Berlin because I want Austria to be reasonably strong to act as a decent buffer against the Prussian forces but I don't want them to be too strong that's the balance here I don't want them to become the dominant power in Europe I still want them to have to compete for their for their seat at the table if that makes sense so that when somebody else which may be us may not be jumps in. Oh, the Mughals have abandoned the Portuguese, Great Britain. Well, I think, by the sounds of it, Portugal is broken, has abandoned a few people. Okay, right. So you're going down to beef up this force. Again, just keep... Okay, let's upgrade the government council. We can upgrade... Well, let's upgrade this industrial building in Tilsit, because it's slightly safer. In terms of research... Community check. That's not that's not even how you say it. Uh, I'm not even going to try and pretend to know what that says. I'm instead going to pick. Uh, it's common land enclosures I want for the farms that I need to build. Let's go for that. We could probably do with making sure that we keep upgrading our um, 
our, our um, entertainment buildings just so we uh, just so we keep we try and recruit more gentlemen because we've got an awful lot of an awful lot of uh, universities to try and populate now. So at Vilnius, we're going to build the barracks to gain extra um, research points per turn of military tech. Just that it will help contribute to speeding up our research for fire by rank. We do need to make sure our economy, well, that we sp that we spend some upgrades on roads. But yeah, right now we've got a some reasonable breathing space. Obviously, once Russia, once Prussia commits to actually pushing out, that could start to get a bit. A bit tricky. So, like right now, I think we have to advance out of Gdansk to intercept that small, that small Prussian raiding force. But yeah, I think we are. We've got a good position. We've got a good start right now, and it, a lot of it's to do with getting that early alliance with Austria. So yeah, you're pushing forward. You want to try and uh, do a bit of damage. So can you, Pavel, leave Gdansk? You can. You can try and request some infantry support. Okay, we've got some good upgrades. Naval Surveyor for Sorbius Law. Let's see if he's the actual useful minister. He is! My navy minister's great, but I don't have a navy. Super. A Warsaw is getting roads. Konigsberg could do with some roads. As could Vilnius. Let's upgrade Lviv's roads because this might be an important highway in future. Let's resist doing too much more upgrading. Let's see if we can sabotage the government building. Yes. We want to keep unrest high as much as we can to prevent this army from moving out. No research over the horizon. You're going to push forward and engage. Oh no, you can't quite engage. Yeah, because you were this side of the farm. At least here you might be able to intercept this force if they do come after us. You might request a regiment of horse. Actually, if you... Actually, if we don't do that, we can upgrade more of our industry. Let's do that instead. Let's get the Weaver's Cottage built. You're already getting two units of line infantry. You could get some skirmishes in, but we don't really need them right now. Yeah, you, you, We're going to get rid of the resistance to foreign occupation faster than their agents going to convert the population. Okay. Got a bit of time. So our income is slowly reducing because we are supporting a larger army than we previously were and our economy hasn't grown enormously to try and deal with that. So you just ran around us like the cads you are. That's part of the problem about pushing out too much. Hey, if you're going to help me, Russia, that's great. Or if you're going to attack Sweden, that's fine as well. We're going to have to do a bit of... Ooh! Ooh! That's very enticing. If we could take that territory, that'd be really useful. Okay, you need to get around to this side of that army. Then we will attack them, but I just want to make sure my other... Okay, let's bring you back to Warsaw. So what we really want down the line are these royal observatories to spawn more gentlemen to improve our research capabilities. So let's build one. You're building better roads. Vilnius could probably do with a government council. Then let's take this army and engage Erdman Vassman. Vassman. 
So next turn we'll have ring bayonets and we will have uh, empiricism, so that will help. I really, really like the uh, philosophical technologies just because they provide a positive upward pressure on your economy almost across the board for the entire game. I love it. What's not to like? Um, but we can't let that... We can't skip, skip the fact that we do have serious responsibilities to manage. So four units of Prussian line. Again, we're going to try and do what we did before, where we're going to advance and engulf them. Uh, one gun team to the rear, just engage targets as you like. Cavalry on either flank, and my general are going to join the lancers. The general is going to join the lancers. Scoot my line forward, let my artillery engage as they please. I mean, ultimately, I want this force to get to a point where we can threaten major Prussian cities. But I, I don't think we can't. We, we don't want to build a large army of chaff to achieve that aim. We have to be more intelligent than that. And we have to try and gain a qualitative edge through superior technology. Okay, let's push my pikemen up. To you and you, push forward. So our lines have met. Our lines have met. Although I'm getting sound issues. Why does this game have to be so unstable? Ninth Regiment are wavering already. They don't like the fact they're being surrounded. Push forward the militia. Okay, let's try to. Ninth Regiment, got the Second Regiment, push on, commit. Excellent. Artillery cease fire. Definitely want to continue. It's just going to be a bit of a challenge to see if we can actually kill them all. Do you interesting impressions? So you've got 26. Okay, we need to really quite religiously monitor this pursuit in order to get the kills we need. Yeah, we've killed the general kill the unit, so now we've got one unit that can focus on each each retreating Prussian troop. Everybody gets tea and medals when they get home. Many, many, many fallen Prussians. That unit may escape, actually, the tent. Yeah, that unit is going to escape. No, they won't. No, we got him. Nice. Decisive victory. So we've mopped him up, destroyed the entire force, left no man alive. They're sending troops into Polish territory, saying, why aren't they coming back? What's happening over there? And we're like, oh yeah, things are happening, all right. Excellent. Okay, you want a gun. You need to start getting some artillery rolling up, and then we can push towards these areas. Okay, let's try and sabotage their uh, barracks. Okay, no. 
know, just just keep the pressure going. Pavel, I mean this general, he's doing super. He's only 37. Too bad he's a dithering defender. Okay. Cobble roads at Warsaw. So next turn we get ring bayonets and empiricism. I mean, I think right now we don't necessarily need square formation because we've got a lot of pikemen and a reasonable component of cavalry. Okay, yeah, there we go. So Prussia is still generating lots of troops, so we can't really afford to take our foot off the gas, so to speak. We have to keep going. And making sure they don't gain holds against us. I mean, if Crimea somehow manages to knock out Moscow, that'd be brilliant. Ooh, Bavaria's coming in. I mean, if Bavaria takes Dresden, that'd be okay. It means Prussia, it means Austria doesn't get it. Okay, Ring Bayonet, so sure. Ring Bayonet, Empiricism, Krakow, Krakow, go for military syllabus. The growth in recruitment cost sucks, but we need it. We need that technology. Okay, we can probably we can upgrade two colleges, so let's spend some money to do that. That sucked up all of our money, but I think it's a... It maybe we want to be a bit... Pass all the money out a bit more intelligently than that. Especially if we can upgrade you to Royal Observatory. Gross town wealth gets us more gentlemen. Let's do that. And then next turn, we'll upgrade another university, and so on and so on. You can carry on with social contract. That boosts tech research rate, which is great. Two more turns till we get animal husbandry, or improved animal husbandry. We can get some farms going. Hopefully get some towns developing. Or well, some of these coastal towns developing. We've got Gdynia. And we've got Memel, both on the coast. Right. Austria bringing more troops into the fight against Prussia. I mean, I don't, I, that it does make me uneasy. Ah, uh, they managed to defeat the Bavarians, but hopefully the Bavarians, they have managed to trip. These uh, these Prussian troops. But if we can get by by rank, we will be able to. So they're offering to pay us for trade. Yes, a step towards friendly relationships. I mean, I, I could probably have asked for more money, but I'm just chuffed. There are they want to trade with me. Crimea is going to go raiding around Russia. So our ally to the east is vulnerable. Ultimately, if we wanted to attack Crimea, we want to do it in a... We want two armies, really. There we go. The gentlemen are starting to spawn. Get you into this school. We'll upgrade. College. Agent detected. Okay, so we've still got these things destroyed. Let's see if we can... Sabotage the barracks. Nope. Let's get one more unit of infantry. We can upgrade Gdansk's government building. We can upgrade Konigsberg Opera House. Like, I want to get all this military, all this, like, civil spending in when we've not got lots of wars to actively fight. That's the goal. Right now, we can spend the money to do this stuff, so let's definitely do it. In future, we're gonna we may have a number of turns where our only available option is to spend money on military recruitment. And when that comes, I want to, that to be backed up by a robust civil infrastructure. At some point, those Prussian armies... I mean, if they go west, that's also okay.
But yeah, if we go after Crimea, we want one army to defend the city of Lviv and one army to prosecute attacks against uh, Ukraine and Crimea. And that will be good, but then we're getting into a full-on war with the Ottomans, so we need to make sure that we're really ready to jump into that. So let's upgrade this tented farms. We can upgrade this peasant farm, although it's in slightly riskier spot. Uh, Vilnius, you've got another town that can develop. Brest-Litovsk, is that it? It is indeed. Okay, let's get these farms upgraded. Minsk, you've got a couple of towns to grow, haven't you? So that's Pinsk. That is your next town. Pop. But there's another one here to the east. Okay, let's yeah, let's get Minsk growing. Three thousand four hundred. Let's get this school upgraded to a college. Adding, adding, adding on some clamor for a form here. Slowly. Keep building. Okay, good. The city has revolted. Let's try sabotage their happiness building. It won't make a huge difference, but just keep chipping away at their <laughs> their um, sanity. Dresden may well rebel. They lost a lot of troops, actually, in that engagement. But yeah, Saxony may rebel, and the Kingdom of Saxony may come back. And that could be pretty good for us. Okay, so you've gone on to improve animal husbandry. But we probably want you to get on with some of these other in some of these other technologies, especially things like Spinning Jenny, because they provide just a flat wealth bonus. Okay. I mean, are you going to go by ship somewhere, or are you just going to try and stab me in the back? It's really odd behaviour here from the AI. Especially when they've got an enemy in Prussia to the west. I don't know, maybe they are going to bring a ship around from the Adriatic all the way up to the Baltic Sea. There we go. First Ottoman force to stick its head out and expose itself. The first proper Ottoman force, but uh, first proper Prussian force that is to do that. Other than that, it's just been probes. Uh, you want military access? No. You are not going to be able to move troops through my land. That's just not going to happen. Flat rejection? No. I mean, Ukraine is would be a really easy capture. There's nothing there. I should go for it and deal with the consequences because it's, it's right there. It's right there. There's no one in it. But then... Hmm, it's right there. There's no one in it. But do I want to start fighting against the Ottomans right now? Maybe not. Okay, so you're going to march here. They're not going to... I was about to say they're not going to intercept. But even if they did, which they have, that's fine. Let's go get them. They've recruited some Swiss line infantry, but we are more than up to the task. And our forces have been so decisively dangerous that our infantry, our line infantry, doesn't even have any experience yet. It's all the cavalry that's done it. So they've got their own cavalry, but we've got pikemen. We don't have square formations, so our pikes need to be extra careful. We do have um, bayonets, so we are able to do some good there. Our artillery don't have canister shot or anything like that, so they are just going to bombard from range. 
keep my pikemen sort of supporting the center of the line. Split the cavalry out on either side. Keep the general with the lances. We are supported by allies. But not an enormous force of allied troops, just a single unit. Plus one of our other units, uh, one of our reinforcing units is here as well. My artillery is going to engage their artillery. Although we may start to adopt the more traditional strategy. around only really engaging in counter battery when their artillery is doing more damage to my infantry than I'm doing to theirs. They don't like my pikemen, that's their target. Not surprising, there's a regiment of horse that's going to get chewed up in a minute. There is the enemy troop. They're already recruiting mercenaries. Okay, they're getting ready to charge. I can hear them shouting and waving their hitting sticks about. Okay, you know what? I don't like the damage they're doing to my infantry. Go for the gunners. Get them pikes. They're gonna kick. They're gonna knock off. A, knock off a couple of our chaps, but their loss, the loss of their cavalry, is going to be more devastating than our handful of troops. Shattered. Great. There's another regiment of horse. cavalry into the provincial into the regiment of horse just so my infantry here can advance on the flank of the mercenaries provincial cavalry aren't as good as the regiment of horse so i need the pikes to come in and here and save them in this instance okay let's push some of these units up probably do to pull my provincial cavalry back okay they shouldn't come back asterisk they might come back okay let's push the cavalry up Firing into the flank of the armed citizen um, into the uh, line infantry, they will not like that. Swing in and threaten the mercenaries. See if we can break them. Excellent. Uh, Austrians are going to go in with the bayonet their prerogative. So we're engaging their artillery but it's not going to really help. Let's get our artillery to stop and bombard some of their troops that are fortified behind the lines. Pull my line back. 12th Regiment of Infantry. Okay, 
you men across the hill. Let's get you over here to kill the 12th Regiment. Get the Lancers to go for the Gorilla, gorilla Infantry in the rear. First Regiment should be isolated. Pikemen run up. We're about to surround and destroy that Swiss line unit. Don't really care about fratricide against the AI. Push forward. general committed they're not going to push too close into here my artillery is going to engage the regiment of horse far into the flank of the swiss line push the infantry forward okay, maybe get my general to chase down you're about to get the last guy. Swiss line. Well, that's the mercenaries that have broken there. One unit help out the pikes, another unit advance forward. Artillery keep bombarding the regiment of horse. Swiss line actually beating my pipes, so let's make sure they don't win. So we have bayonet. Your infantry is better, but we have bayonets, so we should do more damage to you. Let's blitz this cavalry unit through here. Move forward. Same problem that we've got over here. Cease fire the artillery. We probably want to take out their Swiss line if we get them. Can you get my general to pursue those mercenaries? Oh no, everybody go after this unit of line infantry. Artillery bombard the tenth. Maybe make dispatch one unit off the way from this unit to try kill some of these other troops because they are just delightfully under strength. You just kill the Swiss line right here. They're going down a treat. This Swiss line unit was wavering. Spread my line out. And kill the last handful of Swiss line. It's a little veteran unit of Swiss line as well. Sadly, though, my friend, the end for you is cut. I think I'm going to speed up time because right now it's just a one lone unit of infantry holding us up. A very good unit of infantry at that, I gr granted, but it's just the one unit. So we're not worried about the artillery. There we go. 
two units to go off the Swiss line. You men to kill that unit of line infantry. These gunners are somewhere over there. Just gun them down. Some of our infantry units have gained some experience finally. Slaughter them. And I get you guys have got to be. Yeah, you're very tired. You're not in the mood to pursue troops, but it's got to be done. Only two infantry left here. So that first regiment, they were a fresh unit. Well, they were a new unit because that was the first regiment. And I, I highly doubt it was their original unit. Got them. So the last unit left is this unit of the crew for the guns. Yeah, the second regiment of artillery, Demi Cannons. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't do so well. Awesome. So it's not, yeah, that's not the ideal direction for them to route. You men can successfully replenish. You can come out and attack this force, just the remnants of it. Just deal with them. And get back to Warsaw. Okay, 3,600. Let's upgrade a couple of farms. The Admiralty might be useful to get hold of some Polish Marines. They're up to 1,100. Let's recruit another unit of line. Although we, oh, we can't afford new roads, although some of these areas need new roads. Uh, election results. Well, we've, we've tasked that gentleman. Uh, election results. Everyone's pretty good. Okay. Um, but I think, looking at the timer, that's going to end this episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you next time for the continu continuing adventures of Poland. And things seem to be going okay for now. See you, everyone.